I'm John Hall. I'm a professor and chair of the Department of Physiology at the University of Mississippi Medical Center and also the Associate Vice Chancellor for Research there. And I teach medical physiology, uh, graduate students, and uh, postdoctoral fellows. Well, uh, it's interesting. I started off as a major in journalism and English, which actually has turned out to help me quite a lot. Uh, but I, like many people, ran into um, a really good mentor in the area of biology and physiology that got me interested in that topic. And then um, I was very fortunate to choose the University of Mississippi Medical Center for my postdoctoral uh, training with Dr. Guyton, who of course began the uh, textbook of medical physiology, and uh, worked with Dr. Guyton for about 30 years before uh, he died in a car accident in 2003 but began working with him on the textbook of physiology probably around 1988 or 89 and uh, began with the first, uh, the, with the ninth edition. He had written the first eight editions by himself. I think one of the only people to be able to do that. Um, but I was able to uh, join him on the ninth edition, the tenth edition, and then the eleventh and twelfth edition uh, I wrote uh, because Dr. Guyton uh, had died in, uh, in 2003. I think students now are uh, obviously much more savvy in terms of internet uh, and uh, electronic media than we are. They are interested in getting the most information the shortest period of time possible. So. In terms of trends, I think they're, they're very good at accessing information online. Um, they don't want a lot of material that doesn't relate to their medical training. And so one of the things that Dr. Guyton, I think, taught me and also made the book successful was the general philosophy of not including anything in the book that was not, that was, uh, not essential for medical education. So. We, when I first wrote the first chapter, um, this little story, the first chapter that I've written, you know, he, he said, okay, I'll look at it, come back tomorrow, we'll talk about it. He, um, he came back the next day and he said, cut it by 50%. I said, well, what 50% you want me to cut? He said, I don't care, cut it by 50%. Um, the point is, is the book is written for the students. It's written in a way that um, is to enhance their medical education is not a research tool. As you know, the textbook of uh, physio medical physiology started in 1956. Dr. Guyton started that in 1956. And it became, I thought, or I think it's one of the leading selling medical physiology textbooks. Uh, it's, it's, it's a real vehicle for the students to learn about physiology and their medical education. And again, I say that the book is written for students. Uh, it's written in a way that we hope is easy to understand for the students. And it's written in a way that provides what we consider the core material for their health care uh, professional schools that they uh, attend, particularly medical students. You know, I think the most important thing for the medical students is that physiology is the basis for uh, clinical medicine. I think all the medical students, uh, not all, but certainly in the exit interviews when they ask what course work best prepared you for the practice of medicine, uh, by far physiology is rated as the most important course for preparing for clinical medicine. Pathophysiology really is medicine, and so physiology is certainly a core um, bit of information, a core course for medical school. So I think it's very important it combines the uh, elements of biochemistry, anatomy, uh, and medicine. And so it is a, a key subject for the students to learn. In terms of their preparation for physiology, learning physiology, uh, I think it's very important for them to uh, read, read the uh, textbooks that are available to them. I think many times the students will um, 
try to take a shortcut in not reading the textbook and go to class and think that they can learn all of the, what they need to learn in a sh short period of time that's available uh, for the uh, course for the lecture material. I think the, 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 the defining moments are, are three fantastic mentors that I had. And I think everyone gets who is successful, almost everyone who's successful, has a really good mentor. So what I tell, and the three mentors that I mentioned, I had uh, in high school, I had a, a fabulous mentor in the area of journalism, which convinced me that that was the field that I should work in. And I was so glad that I had a chance to, uh, to really uh, learn how to write and learn uh, from this lady who was uh, my high school teacher in journalism and English. So, you know, she uh, really got me a, a scholarship at Kent State University where I learned uh, how to write. And then at Kent State University I had another fantastic mentor in physiology. Uh, so that was the start of my interest in physiology. And I was fortunate when I was at Michigan State University to have uh, a person who was the best teacher on campus. Uh, he won awards for teaching almost every year. And uh, so I was just fortunate. And then finally, of course, Dr. Guyton, who uh, was a tremendous mentor. So the most important thing for the students is to find a good mentor and to keep a mentor throughout your career. Uh, I uh, still have mentors in different areas that I try to learn in. So having a good mentor is, uh, even at my age, I still have mentors. So I think that's a really important thing for students. Even if you're not in research, even if you're just in medicine, you need folks to help you out uh, along the way.